Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we're going to be talking about a way that you might possibly be able to implement the little micro driver into a second generation Leatherman Surge. Now, on the first generation Surge, they actually had the micro driver much like you do with the Wave and Charge series of today. Uh, when they came out with the second generation Surge, they dropped that tool off though. And so a lot of people, uh, th they get a lot of use out of that screwdriver. And I have found it very useful in the past as well. I was okay getting rid of it though because I don't I don't use it quite that much. So there, you know, it's it's kind of few and far between where I actually do use it. But I would like to find a way to implement it. So I'm I'm, I'm just brainstorming the other day on how I could possibly implement this into my Leatherman Super Surge, and I think I found a couple of solutions that are not perfect. They're not ideal. But if you do carry an, a bit kit with you, or in my case, just at least one bit sleeve with you, and you carry the little micro driver, you do have a couple of different options to implement it into the Leatherman Surge in order to make it halfway usable anyway. Uh, one way is pretty decent, the other is actually pretty good. So let me show you what I found out. So the first way that I figured out that you could kind of use the, the micro driver is kind of in the old way that they used to do the uh, that bit adapter kit uh, that they used to put on multi-tools. So the first solution is to set it so that it's in between, you're gonna basically collapse it in between the frame here. Now you're gonna have to set it, in the micro driver it has a kind of a, a broader side and then it has the narrow side. You wanna make sure that the broad side seats down against the top of the pliers here. And then you're able to close it up and you can actually put a little pressure on it. And it's actually pretty stable. It's not bad. Uh, you know, you can move it. There's a little bit of movement to it and it's not the most ideal solution, but you can implement it in that fashion. Now, if you put it the other way, uh, where the flat side or the longer side is not uh, facing down, it does not hold quite as well. And I'm going to show you why. So if we crimp that down, and now we've got it so that the short side is the side. So down here in the bottom, a little difficult to see, down there in the bottom, uh, the two ledges right there that make up uh, the inner part of the pliers, they actually help to hold it in place. So if you're using the narrow side, what will happen is it kind of slips in between there. But if you switch it around so that it's on the broad side, then it, it, it performs a little bit better because it's seating a little more firmly on that ledge and it actually prevents it from kind of working back this way. Now you do have to put a little bit of pressure on it, but it's fairly stable. Now the second method, which I actually prefer more, is to be able to turn this around to the side with the scissors. So what you can do is you take your lock mechanism and you open it up here. And so you slide this right by the lock. And you wanna make sure it's on the inside ledge of the scissors right there. So you, you definitely want two points of contact. Then once you have it in place, then you just put a little pressure on the lock mechanism for the inner tools. And while in three ways, it's really solid. So if I try to push it back this way, or if I try to go top to bottom, it's held in there really nicely. But if I, if I try to go the other way, it's going against the lock a little bit. And so it's not quite as stable there, but it does give you a, at least a way to implement this in where in a worst case scenario, you have to, uh, you know, you need this particular screwdriver, but you need kind of a handle in order to operate it because obviously tightening up a little screwdriver with your fingertips in something that small is not gonna be a viable option. But this does offer a somewhat of a solution where you can implement that into your Leatherman Surge and be able to at least get some use out of it. So this is just something that I found while I was trying to brainstorm on a way to implement the micro screwdriver into the Leatherman Surge. And this is what I've come up with. Try it out. Let me know if it works for you. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.